Good morning, friends, and welcome back to NPTEL course on public speaking. If you all remember well, in the previous lecture, we had talked about glossophobia, that is, anxiety of speech. We also talked about nervousness, and we could also find out how this glossophobia actually halts our speech, our presentation, and at times it actually raises the anxiety level to an extent when a person, despite having the content well prepared, is not able to speak out. Now, we discussed various regions for it, but then today we are going to talk about how these can be controlled, how these can be overcome. And for this, we have titled today's talk as role of positivity in public speaking. For that matter, I think positivity is not only essential in public speaking, but in life as well. Now, where does this positivity come from or what are actually the different ways to become positive? Because by positivity, what actually we are trying to understand is the importance of positive thinking in handling the moments of turbulence, the moments of nervousness, the moments of stage fright where we think of flight or fight. And so, positive thinking is the urgent need to have a control over glossophobia or anxiety. Now, what is this positive thinking? It has been discussed by many authors, many people in myriad ways. But when we talk about positive thinking, one name that comes straight to our minds is none other than Norman Vincent Peale. Now, Norman Vincent Peale, while defining positive thinking, says positive thinking is actually a positive mental attitude that firmly believes that things will soon be better and with that belief one can overcome any type of difficulty in his favor, in his favor. Now, we have earlier talked about attitude. Today, we are going to talk about that positive attitude, positive mental attitude, which can actually help an individual come out of difficulty or can help one control the difficulty or overcome the difficulty and bring the difficulty in his own favor. One can overcome any type of difficulty in his favor with the help of positive thinking. And this positive thinking can be considered as positivity. Now, before we go into uh, the details of positivity, it is time that we discussed uh, positive psychology. My dear friends, this term positive psychology was first propounded by Martin Seligman. In earlier lectures also, we have come across uh, this name Martin Seligman. Now, Martin Seligman, when he discusses this positive psychology, he had several ways to offer, is not it? Uh, in this regard, it is uh, worth mentioning uh, what Peterson says, positive psychology is the scientific study of what makes life most worth living. All of us have at times uh, some weak moments in our life. We are low, low in terms of our confidence. We actually at times feel there are certain things which are going to uh, get us down. 
we are going to be written off very soon and especially in public speaking while a person goes to the dais and at the very moment when he has to face the crowd and address the crowd he is under the grip of a glossophobia and is not able to speak at that time what can come to his help is this positive attitude this positive psychology focuses on strengths instead of weaknesses there are several ways to be positive we shall also discuss and throw light on them so when we talk about positive psychology positive psychology focuses on strengths if you simply sit for a while in isolation and think about yourself uh, what are your strengths and weaknesses then you will find that you have quite a good number of strengths but only a little bit of nervousness can bring the entire thing to a halt so the prime focus of positive psychology is on character strengths we have talked about personality where we have also uh, talked about uh, well being happiness fine now while we are talking about these character strengths you will find uh, most successful people on this earth have been those who have been very optimistic now when we talk about optimism we all know that uh, there is uh, optimism there is pessimism the optimist will always see something hopeful whereas the pessimist will always think something are uh, to be dark shadowy where he always feels like i am going soon to be uh, fainted i cannot do this it is not in my control so optimism is very important now how can this optimism come to every individual actually in many books many psychologists have gone to the extent of saying that one should always have a belief in one's ability one should always have a sort of self esteem self confidence gratitude hope and compassion these are actually the traits of positive psychology now if one actually delves deep into the world of positive psychology one will come across positive attitude i mean as maxwell has rightly said people may hear your words but they feel your attitude have you to also not at times judge a person based on the way not only the way he uses words but also the way because through his words he is also showing his own attitude through one's action through one's emotion through one's behavioral pattern through one's reaction so and especially in public speaking you will find that audience members actually judge a speaker based on the speaker's actions and also of a speaker's words you know my dear friends the world is full of words now for the optimist he will always choose words which have got strengths whereas for the pessimist a pessimist is a person who always looks at the dark side of things and for them even even things which are very small and things which can be done very easily they appear to him to be very difficult because he is weak in his confidence he is low in his confidence uh in this regard if we can take one line from uh, shakespeare's hamlet where one character named rosencrantz says there is nothing either good or bad but thinking makes it so what actually is uh, the implication of this sentence i mean if a man always looks forward to if a man always thinks of good things good things may happen to him but then there is a another category of person who always has a lurking fear in him that things may not be good and for such people things of course do not turn out to be good in any form of communication especially in terms of public speaking 
you will find the speaker, the person who addresses a gathering, a crowd, he actually has to connect on multiple levels. What are those levels? As a speaker, we uh, bring a sort of content. The content is full of words, it is full of sentences, it is full of phrases. But then apart from that, I mean why, why we say that uh, multiple levels? It is not only at the level of language that is linguistic, but paralanguage. Because you know, you not only concentrate on the person's words, you also concentrate on the person's non-words. I mean one's non-verbal behavior because you know when a man speaks something you can get a sort of affirmation or a negation the way he uses that words and you can see that a person who is optimistic will so much of radiance while using the words. So paralinguistic also then non-verbal in order to deliver the intended meaning all of you when you get a topic for a presentation or a, uh, or a, a say a speech. Now what one does? One actually goes to choose the words depending upon the audience members. The audience members are multilingual, multicultural, multi levels of experience they have and that is why the choice of the words lies with the speaker. We have from time to time been saying that words do not have any meaning, people actually attach meaning to the words. That is why when you watch a play, you can find when a character utters a dialogue, the way the dialogue is delivered and the way the emphasis is put on the words, you actually get to know the entire interpretation of the dialogue. And that is also with the help of the attitude. So, attitude I mean here positive attitude plays an important role in establishing communication. We have already been saying right from the beginning that communication has to be two way between the sender and the receiver and it actually have some common grounds where credibility matters, cooperation matters, where there is mutual cooperation, existence, cordiality and in this regard positive attitude can act like a catalyst in achieving desired outcomes. So, is not positive attitude very important for a public speaker? Yes. Now, I can give you certain examples which I have culled from some book. Actually, uh, there can be happiness, there can be sorrow, there can be anger, there can be sadness. So, there can be three types of happiness. Happiness which accrues from life's satisfaction. We can see are uh, the sentences which uh, often foretell uh, the sort of happiness one has. I think my life is great. That is an optimistic view. I am satisfied with my job. But at the same time, how can you be, how can you have such feelings? Maybe you have a very good income. You are able to achieve your own goal. You also have a sort of high self-respect, self-esteem. So, the first category of happiness is life satisfaction, satisfaction in life and for that you need a sort of positive attitude. Now, one can have positive feelings also in life. What are those positive feelings? One can enjoy life. No, we often tell people enjoy life the way it comes to you. Life may have certain ups, it may also have certain downs. And, and you know, when one is very positive, one always looks forward, loves others, enjoys life, one has a lot of friends, one also finds one's work very interesting and such a person is often extrovert. We have in previous lectures talked about extrovert people, introvert people, fine. Uh, we can categorize people uh, on four levels, somebody may be imposing one who will thrust one's views on you, somebody who will be hideous, he may smile and smile and yet be a villain. There, are, there may be another category of people who will be optimistic, he will always see a sun sign wherever possible. But then another category of person who is pessimistic, negative, will always say, oh 
no, no, I, I can't do this. The world is a very bad place to live in. Now, there are people having low negative feelings. Such people often have chronic worries. Mostly they are found fine, sad, angry. We can also call such people as hypochondriac, isn't it? Such people ne can never enjoy life. And then such people, the causes of such people being low in terms of their esteem or feelings is because of low neuroticism. One does not find one's goal in harmony and one actually has, even though has a positive outlook, but always finds a sort of negativity. Now, since we are harping upon positive psychology, we must also understand what positive psychology can do. It can actually help us take to countryside of pleasure and gratification. The sort of esteem that you can find not only within yourself, but the sort of gratitude that you find when you deliver something, when you give something to somebody or when you impart love, when you impart compassion, fine. So up into the high country of strength and virtue as Seligman says. And finally, to the peaks of lasting fulfillment. My dear friends, uh, we from India always believe uh, that life is full of joys. But then, in order to get those joys, one has to limit one's ambition. You will find there are certain people in life who have got lots of ambition, but the ambition is not transferred into action. So, simply having ambition cannot bring you happiness and then life has got a meaning and purpose. How many occasions can one find to estimate oneself very honestly, fine? If one sits in isolation and makes an appraisal of his own achievement, one will really have the satisfaction that one's uh, remuneration, one's respect, one's recognition is in consonance with the sort of work that one has done, with the sort of labor that one has shown. Now, in this regard, uh, Martin Selman uh, gives an acronym that is called PARMA. I mean, these are all uh, alphabet, fine. So, P E R M A PARMA. It is derived by Martin Seligman, which actually refers to the components of good life. Now, most of you might be interested to know, what is this PARMA? Every letter stands for something. What are they? P stands for positive emotions, engagement. A person who does not have any engagement is always bound to have negative feelings. We always say, an empty mind is a devil's workshop. But a person who is always engaged in his profession and enjoys his profession fine, will always find that life is meant for him. Then comes relationships. Ask yourself, how many people are you related to and what is your relationship with other people? I mean, there are people who have got two less friends. There are people who do not have any access to society. There are people who find life to be meaninglessness often get frustrated because the person who does not have a friend or friends will always tend to be frustrated. Where should he go? What should he do? Where should he go? What actually are the preferences? And then finally, one can also think of one's accomplishment. So, this is actually PARMA as per the acronym which was given by Martin Seligman, the propounder of positive psychology. Now, this positive psychology can impact us, as I said in the beginning, not only in life, but also in public speaking. So, how? As a public speaker, if you are optimistic, if you are positive, you will find your confidence is boosted. So, it helps you boost your confidence and it will also improve your job performance. So, if one is always sunny, if one is always full of energy, one will bring warmth not only to himself, but to other colleagues of his also. But if you come across such a person who is a sadist, a masochist, who always tries to derive, you know, displeasure out of it, will not enjoy 
work will not have a sort of satisfaction because you know these things are contagious fine these things are contagious meaning thereby it can affect it affects you it also affects others things good or bad both these things actually affect us simple acts of happiness can actually spread a sort of atmosphere or a sort of ambience where everyone feels pleased to walk in and these positive emotions can increase the chances of success in life. We, we, we always have been discussing that a person who gives in very easily writes something very easily or writes off just in a haste cannot enjoy life rather his life will become a sort of waste. One always has to be tenacious, one has to be consistent and one always has to be forward looking. Now we can also take another model of communication especially a positive uh, communication attitude we call it ABC model which was actually uh, propounded by Albert Ellis another American psychologist. He actually started rational emotive therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy CBT. I mean when you come to know something when you come uh, to have a sort of cognition of a problem and then based on this there can be a therapy and then again there is another rational emotive therapy all of us are emotional but let us not be emotionally blind let there be some amount of rational. So, while we are talking about this ABC model of uh, communication attitude, this A stands for attitudes which actually means affect, A for affect, B for behavior and C for cognition. So, this ABC model of communication tells us that our attitude can affect others, our attitude can help us behave better with others and we have also to understand we have actually to recognize this model essentially helps to check one's attitude during a period of high adversity or stress when somebody is under glossophobia next time one can sit and with the help of this model one can find that if there is some problem with one's attitude because this perhaps might have created a sort of crisis this might have brought him down while he started addressing the crowd suddenly he was overcome or gripped with a sort of fear or a sort of anxiety of speech as we have seen in the previous lecture. So, why you, you also might be thinking as to how it is relevant to public speaking because when the public speaker can analyze active ingredients of a problem or an issue and then he can work upon that for that you have to recognize first that is why cognition. So, if you have recognized fine and then based on this recognition you can always improvise my dear friends. How? So, there can be two tests here fail test internal beliefs why why does a person fail I am worthless and stupid naturally it will actually result in a sort of depression. But if somebody has got a sort of internal belief I am smart, but I did not study for this test I can do better. Now, in the first instance we found that he already declared that I am worthless and stupid because he does not want to come out of it. In the second one we find he says I am smart but I did not study for this test recognition I mean admission in this case there will be no depression rather you can take something out of it. So, thoughts always create feelings and these feeling creates or results into behaviors and your behavior can reinforce your thought. Now, as a public speaker why should one go and opt for positive content to deliver. I mean when one has got a sort of positive communication it is not only about the content, but it can also be about the fatigue. Now, you might be thinking what fatigue? 
Initially, when a person goes, we have discussed in some of the lectures that when you go to speak the very first moment, what is needed is a sort of greetings because you have to create a sort of credibility. I mean, phatic communication includes greetings and utterances such as nice meeting you. Of course, you cannot as a speaker tell them that nice meeting you, but through your non-verbal behavior, I mean, a simple smile can actually bring a lot of advantage. I mean, if one can stand for some time and spread just a little smile that actually helps in creating a sort of rapport. It is actually a sort of constructive approach. It can actually help us create a sort of conversation. Think of some other uh, occasions when you met a stranger and for some time both of you were silent and then perhaps you started with a sort of greetings and this greetings was one way to open the communication and while you started the communication with a greeting, communication could prolong, could, could go forward. Communication actually emulates good emotions for not only for the speaker, but also for the listener and that also in an implicit manner. Have you not realized that when you have talked to a stranger just for the first time and after that you sometimes have a feeling, oh what a nice chap, what a nice talk. What a sort of information that I got from this person. It was of course a nice meeting with him. But for all these, what one requires is a sort of intention. The world is good because you think the world to be good. There, is, there goes a very small quote, good mind, good find. Adaptation, one has to adapt. And, and you know your adapt, adaptation depends not only while you are conversing, but as a public speaker, when you are speaking, you will find that in the midst of your talk, there might be certain, you know, hindrances and you have to adapt yourself according to the situation. Say, for example, there was uh, uh, just in the midst of a talk, there was actually a sort of uh, void, there was actually a sort of silence, there was actually a sort of noise, there was actually a sort of disturbance. Now it is up to the speaker how to adapt himself to that, change his stand and then your active listening can also serve as essential to establish positive communication. But in order to do that, one has always to stand, one has always to stay positive my dear friend. Now this positive thinking uh, can help us have a sort of positive talk. I mean, there has been quite a good amount of research in this area and research suggests that one's personal and social well-being is essentially determined by the positive nature of their communication abilities. I mean, if I am by nature positive, naturally my personal life as well as my social life as well as my social well-being have got a lot to do in this regard. This is actually the outcome of one research by Albada and Moore who say that one's personal and social well-being is essentially determined by the positive nature of their communication abilities. Uh, we will also, if time permits, we will also throw some light on nature versus nurture theory. Communicative choices, as a communicator you have a choice. As a public speaker also you have a choice. So your choices are primarily influenced by your cognitive development, by your cognitive development. If you are able to recognize the lapses, the gaps, the hindrances, research conducted by Sadinger and others on pre-speech positive self-talk. Now here, uh, let me spend some time. Uh, there was actually two cases they had and they said that if students are asked to give a speech in the class, it is quite certain that most of them will be a little bit nervous or anxious. They will have a sort of a speech anxiety. So, if they can have some amount of self-talk, I mean before the 
real talk it will actually help. So, this self talk explains how employing self affirming statements reduces performance anxiety that is why as children you might have at times been told to read loudly as a presenter also or as a novice presenter when they are they, they are under uh, the grip of fear and anxiety they should also be told to have some self talk before they come to the real talk that will not only boost their confidence but that will actually provide them with a lot of positivism because you know as I have already said in one of my lectures that when one is under the grip of glossophobia one actually finds some bodily reactions where one's throat goes parched, hands tremble, fine, the heart beat actually becomes very fast, but then there is a positive side to it and the positive side is that only the speaker knows it and the speaker feels it and the speaker should know that this nervousness is natural, nothing is going to happen neither the sky going to fall down nor the earth going to crumble, only you have to keep your own confidence at the proper level. And you know if you understand the reason, the reason is during such hours, during such moments there is actually a sort of adrenaline surge in your body which actually will pump some extra energy and that will actually help this communication anxiety has been attributed so many regions, but then these regions which we can cite here are perhaps skill deficits, conditioning and cognitive. Now, what are skill deficits? Somebody who lacks the necessary skills naturally uh, is frightened of his own performance. Everyone, those people who get nervous, they become nervous only because they have the ambition to perform and this performance anxiety actually sometimes or the other is resulted because of the deficiency in terms of his skills. Conditioning, his past experiences of negative consequences suddenly he comes to the days and again he is reminded of how he failed the next time because he was not able to have a sort of cognition and then he did not work on it he had a lack of self awareness and he had a sort of complexity crisis. In this regard there has been a very beautiful piece of research by Joe Ayers who in his study says the power of positive thinking can help cope up with speech anxiety and he also suggests let there be a sort of visualization, fine. You remember in uh, one of the previous lectures I talked about catastrophizing where you feel as if I am going to fall down, I am going to faint any moment, fine. So, that was catastrophizing, but there is a solution to it and the solution is visualization, let me come out of it. I am fine, I am an experienced speaker and I can do well, think of some beautiful incident think of some memorable incident as a visualization process and this visualization process while you are giving a presentation or a talk why cannot you think of a beautiful rose before you and then think of how happy you had become the day when you had plucked this beautiful uh, rose. So, if you have some pleasant feelings within it can actually be reflected and it can help you reduce this speech anxiety and increase the proportion of positive to negative thoughts speakers reported having before, during and after a speech. So, my dear friends let us have some amount of visualization, think that I am going to win. After my talk comes to an end I can come across lots of applause, I can come across lots of praises. There are benefits of positive thinking and what are these bene benefits? There are actually changes uh, fine in the quality of a good public speaker if he has some amount of positive thinking. Sear and Carver have suggested that optimists, I mean people who always look at the bright side of things, they are better at communication. So, they adapt to stressful situation very soon, but remember here. Even if somebody is optimistic, but unbridled optimism is bad. What is what are what is this unbridled ambition, unbridled optimism? I mean, if you have you're too optimistic, 
that is also bad fine. So, uh, they say that positive thinking as a quality can help determine categories of both nature and nurture. It may be some way or the other there is a within, but one can nurture and nurture how? One can from the past experiences, one can take certain cues and work upon. Though it is undoubtedly possible to nurture positive communication skills, how? Through practice, through performance and through experience, fine. But then there can be certain limits also of positive thinking. I, as I said, unbridled optimism. So, unbridled optimism may not always be good. So, please be careful. Be optimistic only to a level. Again, maladaptive optimism. There is optimism, but this optimism may be difficult also in psychological terms. This can be called a sort of defensive defensive optimism when you try to defend yourself even if you are wrong. Coalition had elaborated on the tyranny of positive thinking as a cult fashion statement and then another quote by Feynman who says disciplinary pressure and obligatory organizational practice that also can harm your positive thinking. At times it can also become disciplinary pressure. So, one can also have a sort of pressure and this pressure can also lead to a sort of optimism, but optimism in a way that it at times becomes very unbridled, uncontrolled. My dear friends, uh, we can continue to talk on optimism and pessimism and positive thinking, but I am reminded by this beautiful book by Norman Fine, by Norman Vincent Peale the power of positive thinking where he says always think of God to be on your side and make God always your witness and if meaning thereby if you can have a faith in some power that can also help. There are certain books that can help you uh, come out of uh, this speech anxiety and that can help you develop some amount of optimism and positivism. Uh, one book by uh, Brad Aronson, Humankind Changing the World One Small uh, Act at a Time, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen and The Secret by Rhonda Byron, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. If you can consult all these books, I think you will get plenty of thought and you can feel stimulated, you can feel energized my dear friend. Before we come to end this talk, because uh, we can continue uh, to tell you about the various ways of adapting positivism in order to bring a positive outlook, not only on life, but on your performance. But it is always better to remember what Winston Churchill says, the positive thinker sees the invisible. I mean somebody who is positive, he thinks positive and such a thinker sees the invisible, feels the intangible and achieves the impossible. So, if a person with positivity can see the invisible, if he can feel the intangible, he only can achieve the impossible. And my dear friends, you are actually the citizens of a world where we have different resources to invite optimism in our life, it is time that we became optimistic and tried to do things in the most positive manner, so that we are not run down by glossophobia or anxiety of speech. I think if you can keep these things, if you can think of these points and remember these points, I think you will always be positive because positivism always plays things which a person who is pessimist can never think of. With this, let me come to wind up this talk and thank you very much. I wish you all a good day.